Hello everyone, my name is Clay, and I am Terminally Nerdy. Today, I welcome you to spend a nerdy moment with me as I discuss the fantastic narrative game, What Remains of Edith Finch. Released by Annapurna Interactive in 2017, this game is generally referred to as a walking sim, as the major focus of the game is the main character Edith and her exploration of her family's ancestral home. Let me level with you here. This is a hard one to review for me, as this game is almost completely story-driven. I feel calling it a walking simulator is a bit of a misnomer, though, as there are gameplay elements and little mini-games all over the place. What Remains of Edith Finch, as I said earlier, is the story of Edith, a girl of around 18 years old who has come back to her family's ancestral home in the woods of an island after her mother passes away and leaves her a mysterious key. You control Edith as she explores the Finch home, going through family members' rooms and reading bits of their history, which in turn causes you to relive that history. This game is exceptionally linear, as you really only have one single path to take through the house, and has almost no replay value to speak of, as the mini-games you play during exploration don't seem to be failable or offer any real choice. And yet... And yet this game is something special. The story here is the main draw. The combination of Edith's journey, along with her learning all about her family, is where this game really shines. Edith is fully voice acted, and will make comments all throughout the house as you explore. The music also adds an appropriate tone and feel during exploration and the minigames. I adored every moment I spent with this game. The visual design is also striking. From the very first moment of the game, as you walk up towards the Finch home and you see it looming over the trees, you get a sense of age and wonder. As you explore the house, each family member's room very clearly shows their personality as well. When you see one family member's room covered in photos, cameras, and hunting gear, you instantly get the idea of them being kind of a survivalist, which is then confirmed when you go through their story. Every family member has a unique story and a unique minigame or gameplay mechanic that you have to learn while going through this. And these stories, they're not happy. No, the Finch family story is one of sadness and death. A lot of death. And a lot of really messed up deaths. And be warned, you sometimes are in control of the death of a particular character. There is one particular moment that, once I realized what was about to happen, made me highly uncomfortable. Folks who've played this game, well, let's hope that character is laughing for all time, right? And the ending of the game is also... Well, I'm not going to lie, I teared up during the end, as it was something that felt fairly personal and resonated with me. The sense of loss is real by the end of the game, and it was fitting. And it was also a beginning. I will admit that there are some control schemes here that got on my nerves. You have to move your mouse in very specific ways to activate things. They were clearly trying to make it more realistic. Like, you gotta move your mouse upwards to open windows, or spin your mouse around to rotate things, that sort of thing, and it can feel clunky at times, but it was a minor irritation, honestly. And there are lots of these little control schemes, usually a unique one for every minigame. Finally, this game is short. Very short. I finished it in about two and a half hours, and I personally felt satisfied by the end. I imagine that not everyone will be satisfied with that length. I have heard and seen complaints as well that the ending doesn't answer every question to the story, and in my personal opinion, it shouldn't. Part of the magic of this game is that sense of wonder, of awe, of straight up what the fuck is going on. And our narrator herself never really fully gets the picture of what was going on with her family by the end of it. You get a sense of closure, of an ending, and a new beginning, and for me that was good enough. The mystery of the Finch family will live on. This game generally goes for about 20 bucks on Steam and the Nintendo Switch, and if you're a fan of visual novel-styled games, as that's really the best comparison Mom for this game, then you so need to play to What Remains of Edith Finch. Okay. Experience the stories of the Finch family and help Edith understand her history. As always, thank you for spending some of your time with me today. Treat each other kindly, and please remember to stay nerdy. After Milton, I'll see you on the next one. Mom, Take care. The hey there, I just want to say thank you for watching this video. 
and a special thank you to all my patrons who are listed over there on the right hand of the screen. If you want to get your name in those credits, feel free to check it out at patreon.com slash terminallynerdy. And hey, be kind to each other and stay nerdy. Thanks.